good afternoon and welcome to my penultimate head teacher's video to explain what's been going on in the school and what's going to go on in the school. So I start with buildings. We have opened a new block of toilets, boys and girls, separate toilets, and that's worked very, very well. With Mr. Walton, who has been appointed as my successor as head teacher, is already planning some more toilets because toilets are really important to the kids. That's important that they have the best possible facilities. We're improving our admin facilities by increasing the size of their block because as we've grown, the demands have got bigger and bigger and they're living in cubby holes at the moment. We are doing up the staff toilets for the first time in 50 years, which is going to be a pleasure for them over the holidays. We're also building our new sixth form computer room, which is a study room, which has been going on fantastically well and I'm hoping will be completed in the next few weeks so that we can welcome our massive numbers of students staying on uh, from our own cohort and about 35 to 40 from elsewhere. We'll probably lose two or three to competing local schools, but we have a massive uh, popularity amongst students in other schools for a number of reasons. One, we let them wear their own clothes within reason. Two, we let them manage their own time and then we test them every six weeks. And three, the results are brilliant and the staff are just so committed to what they're doing. And uh, the results are really, really important to the students. They can achieve as much as they like in uh, so many areas, but those exam results will give them some some collateral to use alongside their personal skills and, and, and so on. Careers has been fantastic recently. We had uh, over 90%, over 95% of the 10s went on work experience, organised by parents, thank you for that, and over 400 year 8s and 9s spent a day with their parents at work. And what this does, again, thanks to the parents for organising it, it gives them that confidence and awareness of the world of work and they're treated a little bit like adults. We've got year 11 exams coming up and year 13 exams and I'm determined that we're going to leave, I'm going to leave with a set of record results just so Steve's job as head teacher gets even more difficult. And we have got Easter revision classes on interventions, revision sessions and high quality teaching going on right to the end, which is really the middle of May when their public exams start. So it's an opportunity over Easter for the year 11s and 13s to come in make the most of the facilities. I'll be in trying to clear out 2,000 books and 2,000 CDs and I'm not even looking at the vinyl. Anybody want some jazz CDs? Let me know. I'm using notes today because I want to make sure that I don't miss things. We are fully staffed for September at the moment, but we're always on the lookout for teachers. An English teacher, science, maths, IT in particular is something we were We'd be very keen to recruit technology and uh, just give us a ring and come and see us. Steve Walton's going to be recreating his own management team and we've currently got candidates from outside flocking to us for an assistant head teacher post to take on his role, almost impossible, managing the pastoral team. So if you are one of those candidates, you've got Easter holidays to apply. And if you have got any doubts, we will be here over the next few weeks to of the holidays to guide people where they want to be. We will have 1,550 students in September and that will include 70 with educational healthcare plans. Now this is going to sound controversial but I have been involved in special needs since my teaching practice 46 years ago and all the way through in my three years, three schools, I wanted to be responsible for inclusive education. It is a horror to me and recently I was asked to host a meeting here for the uh, Minister for Families and Children, David Johnson, and the local MP, MP, Julie Marston. And one of the things that I made clear at the meeting was, how come a school can be outstanding if it's got one or two kids with special needs, EHCPs, is failing to attract children who need their inclusive, comprehensive, non-selective education so much. So for example, we have 70 students in September with educational healthcare plans. The boys' school in Stortford, the girls' school in Stortford, the boys' school in Hartford, the girls' school in Ware, and the Catholic school in Stortford have maybe 20 between them. 
We're meant to be inclusive, comprehensive, non-selective schools. I'd like this to be sorted. And the minister says he's going to work on that, but I don't think we'll have him as a minister in 2025. Educational healthcare plans in Hertfordshire, they've gone from 3,000 or so last year to 12,000. They've put five million pounds towards them and it is going towards admin, not to supporting the children in schools. What I have to tell you is that many educational healthcare plans are unnecessary. They don't address the students' needs, which is basically for good teaching. They are terribly written and that is not improving, so that the plans do not bear any relation to the reality of the school, and they are largely unfunded. And I'll say that again, they are largely unfunded. Some parents feel that an educational healthcare plan in itself will solve their children's, their children's difficulties in school. It won't. Working with the school, us, working with the staff, us, is the best way forward and what most children need is high quality teaching and you know they're getting that at Chauncey. We recently had our 21st staff conference, my last, and 50 odd staff contributed to training each other. We had a great time at Phantoms Hall and thank you to Phantoms Hall for their hospitality. We pay and thank you also for recruiting so many of our students to work with you. There is no special educational needs plan that will address boys hanging around toilets and eating their lunch in there. That's not a special need. And I'm afraid, having done a lot of work on this over the years, and having a qualification in it, being naughty or rude is not necessarily a symptom of ADHD. So it's time that we all got quite sensible about this. I have fought and succeeded with five children getting them places in special schools. I have battled with the Secretary of State for Education and recently, one, we are in a local authority where they have failed their Ofsted inspection and they are not listening to their senkos or the parents. What we need is to spend more time providing the support in school rather than the paperwork. And I have to say, we spend half a million pounds on special needs. We can't find another half a million. Sports in this school, I'm gonna go on to now. I'm so delighted. If you go round other schools, they often say you will find that we win most of the things in this area. It's no longer true. Our senior netball uh, girls are county plate finalist. Year seven and eight netball district runners up. Year seven and eight boys county cup football finalist. Year seven and eight, both of them. The year eight district football runners up. Year seven girls and boys and girls indoor athletics. District champions, that's about 14 schools in East Arts. Year 7 girls, growing sport, football, district runners-up. Year 9 basketball in the last six of the National Cup. 15 years ago we got in the plate and I let them paint my face yellow and green and I've suffered with skin problems ever since. Maybe I'll do something else. Fabian Smith has got such a calm approach with these kids and they are so, so confident in what they're doing, that they are an example of good teaching, good learning and working together. And if you can get along to any of these competitions, please do. The basketball are also year eight, year nine and year 10 boys champions. So when you're told that other schools are winning these things, it isn't true, you know. See what else I've got I wanted to talk to you about. I've got some notes. Oh, we transition the year sevens. We're full, naturally, in September with 250, and we got about 90 on a waiting list, and there will be appeals coming. Claire Matthews will be using the last few months before she goes on maternity leave to visit every child in every junior school, and we will be running a summer school and doing all the work we normally do. I know as I come to the last sports day when I'll be running the 800 metres, and if you've run with me before, come back, look it up and come back and run with me. I'll be a bit slower. I know that uh, Steve is, has risen to the challenge of taking on the headship of this fantastic school. And I know that he will work flat out for however long he's got left, which may be 20 years, maybe 10, to work with parents to make this school even better and promote student achievement in all its guises. And I must ask you to work with him. I'm coming up to my last Chauncey Vox, which for many of you will probably be a blessing 
if you've ever played with me on Chauncey Rocks in the past, we'll come along. This last three, three months since I told you I was retiring have been great. I've met so many people who have congratulated me on it. Well, tonight I'm going to look at my new house because I'm moving home. I've got to buy furniture and stuff and work out all those bills. I'm moving to Hartford to a little muse house in the centre. So if you see me, say hello. I'll do another video in the summer, but I know that this last term is going to be fantastic. The new buildings, the new staff, the approach towards making sure that everything that goes on in our classrooms promotes student achievement. And everything Steve does and I do and the canteen do and the cleaners do is to make sure that the teachers have the best opportunity possible. Carry on supporting them. They're human, they're brilliant, they're chauncey through and through. Speak to you again once more. Thank you.